Now we're going to jump right into our last six awards. Now to present the award for B2B Startup of the Year is David Brown of the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce and Matt Watson of Stackify. I want to start out by thanking Mark Hazelbrook for claiming to be the oldest person in the room. <laughs> that way I don't have to admit to it, so thank you, Mark, congratulations. I'm the only one that's going to use cheaters up here, though, so I'm not so sure. These four finalists for B2B uh, Startup of the Year have clients that range from city halls to NFL teams. But whether their users were analyzing a new city product project or the most recent game film, these startups all took pages out of the right playbook, as each saw notable growth this past year. And here are the finalists. Huddle. The maker of online video analysis and coaching tools, the startup acquired its two largest competitors in the high school football market and following its motto to dominate. It added NHL and NBA teams to its roster and gave new clients new tools, releasing an iPhone and Android app. Lockpath, the maker of compliance and risk management software. In September, Lockpath released the second version of its flagship product, the Keylight platform. In April, it was one of 10 companies to present at the MIT Sloan CIO Symposium's Innovation Showcase. And over the past year, the company quadrupled revenues, made key hires, and added strategic partners. MindMixer, an online platform for community engagement. The startup topped off its past year when it learned it had been accepted into Code for America's inaugural accelerator. Originally launched to serve cities, it added school districts, universities, and politicians, growing its client list to 200 and closing a $1.9 million seed round in the process. And finally, Rarewire, the maker of App Creation Studio. The startup made itself known in the mobile app universe in July 2011 as the maker of the Atlantic's iPad app, which went on to win two Appy Awards. Rarewire has since turned the magic behind its app making over to its clients, with the private beta release of its app creation studio. And the analog goes to Huddle. Accepting the award on behalf of Huddle is Kyle Murphy, Matt Mueller, and... Murphy's hiding out there somewhere. Uh, oh, he's right here. He's sneaking. <laughs> there he is. Hey, well, we just want to thank everyone. I think uh, it's, it's awesome to win a company award, and I think we have to start this off by thanking everyone on the Huddle team. There's a handful of people here, and there's about 25 people back in the office still supporting coaches. This is our busiest weekend of the year, so... Hat tip to everyone who's, uh, who's helping us dominate this weekend back at the office. Uh, you know, Huddles, uh, we've grown a lot. I want to thank Silicon Prairie for tweeting about us and writing about us when it was just Sarah and I tweeting all the time. Uh, we were nobodies. And uh, we've grown a lot since then. And, and uh, we just want to thank everyone for all the help they've been in helping us grow over the, the past few years. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Now to present the award for Consumer Startup of the Year is Maria Claire Marcusen of Simply Retail and Skip Quint of Bellevue University, one of tonight's premier sponsors. Category's finalists are gaming companies, but the four companies' performances over the past year suggest none of them were playing around. Here are the finalists. Bloom. The Social Beauty Network launched nationally in August, and less than six months later, it was the, on the verge of surpassing the 100,000 member mark. 
In April, Bloom closed a $5.4 million Series A round led by the Capricorn Investment Group. At the close of 2011, the startup made InStyle's Best of the Web list. Douala. This payment startup passed $1 million in transactions per day, released features at meetups that packed bars in Des Moines, and released a $5 million Series B round led by Union Square Ventures that included participation from Iowa native Aston Kutcher. Fast Company named the startup to its list of the world's most innovative companies. Hatchings. The game described as the world's largest Easter egg hunt released a private beta of its overhauled second version, Hatchlings 2. And by the end of June, it was preparing for its July 1 public release. The new version moved the game off Facebook's website, where it attracted 3.5 million users to its own domain. Skyview Entertainment. The startup behind Battle Bears opened the past year by announcing a new milestone, 11 million downloads, and releasing a new game. In December, it released another new title, multiplayer game Battle Bears Royale, and by the end of June, its download climbed to 17 million. The startup was named one of the pocketgamer.biz's top 50 developers. And the analog goes to? Dwala. Accepting the award on behalf of Dwala is Dwala. Could have handled that, buddy. I'll hold it while you talk. Oh, oh. Well, look, thank you guys. I mean, Des Moines gave us our first user base. Um, Des Moines gave us our first investors, which helped us figure out how to do what we do legally. Um, Silicon Prairie News was the first person to ever report on us. Um, that basically gave us credibility that got us our first meetings. Um, the people in the room are the people that built what Dwala is. So thank you. Now to present the award for Ambassador of the Year is Wayne Arnold of Vano and our, own, our very own Jeff Wood, Silicon Prairie News. Though these four finalists all reside outside the region today, they all have strong ties to Silicon Prairie. They've all lived here, and they all don't, haven't forgotten that as they moved on in their life. Here are the finalists. First is Ashton Kutcher. Not only, <laughs> not only getting me 200 emails in one day, but uh, this high-profile actor and investor returned to his home state of Iowa in April to announce his investment in Douala. Though for just one day, Kutcher's star power shed a spotlight on the Silicon Prairie. Raul Gupta. <laughs> this native Californian spent the last eight years in Omaha until moving back to his home state in April. Before leaving, however, he co-founded a web development firm whose co-founder still remains here. The company carries the slogan, a Silicon Prairie company with Silicon Valley roots. In June, he organized a Silicon Prairie meetup for those in San Francisco. Nick Seguin, after serving as the Kauffman Foundation's Manager of Entrepreneurship, 
for 18 months. Nick Seguin returned to Ohio in May to work at a web, ooh, <laughs> at the web development firm he co-founded. Since leaving Kansas City and during travels with the Kaufman Foundation, Seguin has stayed connected to the region, boasting its startup community when given the opportunity. And finally, Ben Silberman. This Iowa native became one of the most notable names in tech this past year as the startup he co-founded, Pinterest, exploded. With the rise came awareness of his and his startup's roots. On stage at our Think Iowa event in October, Silverman said Iowa, given its population and size, is disproportionately rec represented on Pinterest, a fact that has appeared in other stories about the platform. And the analog goes to? <laughs> Raul Gupta. So first of all, uh, thanks to the vision of, of Silicon Prairie News three years ago, Danny, Jeff, and Dusty were starting all this because I wouldn't be holding a golden prairie dog otherwise. Um, in case my family is watching in San Francisco on the live stream, hi Tatiana, hi Sean, love you Sarah. Um, so uh, three thank yous. First of all, uh, thanks to Ashton Kutcher for not tweeting about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks to the rest of you for responding to my blitzkrieg of tweets. Uh, and finally, really, in terms of being an ambassador, there, there would be nothing to talk about if it wasn't for the work that all of you were doing. I mean, I... <laughs> so these are my ambassador duties. So where have you been? I've been in Omaha. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, really. And then I explain all the great things that are going on. It's really fantastic. Um, so if you guys weren't doing the work that you're doing, I wouldn't be able to be out there representing you, so thank you. Now to present the award for Community Champion of the Year is our very own Jeff Slobotsky, accompanied by Je uh, Andy Stoll. Each of the four finalists play a different part in the region's startup community, but through their unique roles, all have had a major hand in the growth of the Silicon Prairie. Here are this year's finalists. Joni Cobb, President and CEO of Pipeline. In her role, Cobb works with nearly 60 entrepreneurs. In 2012, she led the expansion of Pipeline into Nebraska, bringing the organization to serve three of the four Silicon Prairie states, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska. Thad Langford, entrepreneur in residence at Open Air Equity Partners, formerly the president and CEO of Zave Networks, Langford joined Open Air Partners following Google's acquisition of Zave. In the past year, he's become an active investor in and an advisor to Kansas City startups. Community involvement includes serving on the Kansas City Chamber's Big Five Steering Committee for Entrepreneurship and participating on a Tech Week Chicago panel titled Stories from the Silicon Prairie. Christian Renault. <laughs> co-founder, principal, and mentor in residence at Startup City Des Moines. Renault is also the co-founder and CEO of his own startup, Presentio, and serves an as an advisor to more than 25 startups. In December, he co-founded Startup Iowa, and in June, he co-founded Plains Angels, Renault is a Technology Association of Iowa board member and was the keynote speaker at Iowa's I to, I to Iowa event and the Nebraska Summit on, on, on Entrepreneurship. And lastly, Dusty Reynolds, new father, by the way, 
Director of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce. In his role, he provides connections and resources for local entrepreneurs and collaborates with university officials, funders, entrepreneurs, and others to build an entrepreneurial ecosystem. He also organizes the monthly Cornstalks event and established the quarterly event, Common Ground. And the analog goes to Dusty Reynolds. This is another one of those cases where something came up and that was uh, a baby was born. So uh, Dusty Reynolds' wife uh, gave birth to their first child, uh, I think earlier this week. So he gave me a call and asked if he did a, get the award, Jim Linder will accept. Well, I'm shorter than Dusty, older than Dusty, and he's thinner than I am. But uh, I am fortunate that uh, I know Dusty. I enjoy working with him uh, at the Nebraska Chamber, uh, helping him uh, integrate with the community and work with the University of Nebraska. Uh, the region is fortunate to have Dusty as a representative in the role that he's in. The Omaha Chamber, David Brown and his colleagues, were wise to engage Dusty uh, to fill this important role of helping grow the entrepreneurial ecosystem here in uh, the region. Uh, Dusty did provide me with some remarks that he wanted to share with you, so I will read those from Dusty Reynolds. <laughs> Dusty, I hope you're watching this live streaming. The Prairie is full of hardworking, honest, high integrity folk who care so much more than just themselves. I'm consistently reminded of how awesome we have it here in the Midwest. To know that I get to work with all of you folks is an absolute blessing. Thank you so much for letting me work alongside of you as we continue to build something extra special here. He continues, while the Silicon Prairie Awards are much more legitimate than those offered on the office, I can now relate to Dwight Schulte when he said, I can no longer say that I'm always the Padawan, never the Jedi. Dusty, congratulations. Uh, good luck with your new family, and congratulations from everyone here at Silicon Prairie. We're in the home stretch of our awards. Two awards left, the second to last. The new startup of the year will be presented by Macy Cook of RecBob and Ryan Downs of ProxyBid. <laughs> this category recognizes the new kid on the block that quickly made a name for itself and for good reason. Each of these startups launched its public beta between July 2011 and June 2012. And here are the finalists. Front Flip. This customer engagement platform launched in Kansas City in November and then nationwide in April and has since attracted a client list that includes McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Arby's, and Boston Market. With more than 200,000 registered users, Flintflip can be found in more than 700 locations. Goodsmiths. This online marketplace for makers launched in early April and by the end of June had signed up more than 1,300 stores that listed more than $800,000 in total inventory. June was also marked by a key hire for the startup, as Goodsmiths hired an 18-year Meredith veteran to join its team. Clink Mobile. This mobile-based minutes and money transfer startup launched in January and began marketing its platform to users in Afghanistan in February. One month later, the startup's founder was selected to participate in Think Big Partners' Silicon Valley Bank Seed Showcase. Sporting Innovations. This sports stadium technology startup, launched in October 2011, is a creator of the Fan360 application. 
In May, the Stadium Business Summit awarded the app its Product Innovation Award, which recognizes a product that has uniquely transformed and improved the way stadiums, arenas, and sports venues do business. And the analog goes to Goodsmiths. Accepting the analog on behalf of Goodsmiths here is James Eliason, accompanied by his team. Levi's coming last because I told him he was going to do this speech. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, SPN. I mean, uh, it's it's an incredible honor for us to to accept this award. Um, I woke up one morning about eight months ago uh, when we were doing client work and. I came into work and at the time it was Brandon, Levi, and myself, and I said, we're done doing this. Uh, we are going to focus 100% on Goodsmiths, and, and ever since we did that, uh, we've gone uphill um, as far as traffic, sales, the whole nine yards. And to be quite frankly, this entire team that's come over tonight uh, from Des Moines, deserves a lot of credit, so I just, it will take two seconds, but please clap for the entire team of Goodsmiths. We, uh, we certainly have a lot of things on our plate um, as we go forward, and we certainly, we appreciate um, all, this, all the support from, from the prairie that we get. And uh, we're gonna take a little analog home with us on the bus back to Des Moines. I'm sure we're gonna have a good time tonight. So uh, thank you all so much, thank you. Now for the final category of the night, one that includes nothing but familiar faces is Startup of the Year, presented by Brittany Massio and Dusty Davidson of Silicon Prairie News. I really apologize for my comment about standing up at the beginning of this night. Uh, although it's fun, because I got to experience it, right? I didn't get that the first time. Uh, we get the pleasure Miss Brittany and I, of uh, presenting the final award of the night, uh, probably my favorite, uh, Startup of the Year. Uh, this category recognizes a new kid on the block that quickly made a name for itself and for good reason. The finalists are Dwala. <laughs> Uh, this payment startup earned media attention nonstop this past year. It kicked, off, it kicked it off by surpassing $1 million in transactions per day, went on to release three features and products, and in February closed a $5 million Series B round led by Union Square Ventures. Huddle. Dominate. Um, <laughs> this maker of online video analysts and coaching tools stood out in a year when a wave of, fe when a wave of feature stories on sports technologies hit newspapers nationwide. Coaches going high tech with film study, oh, with film study, one South Carolina outlet wrote. Huddle's past year included acquisitions in two, in two largest competitors in high school football market and the expansion of its roster to include NHL and NBA teams. MindMixer, this online platform for community engagement, took part in the rise of the Gov 2.0 trend and by year's end earned a spot in the inaugural Code for America Accelerator. It brings to the program a client list of more than 200, including newly launched verticals, school districts, universities, and politicians. In April, it closed a $1.9 million seed round. Rarewire. This mobile app started, uh, this mobile app startup put the power of making mobile apps into more hands when it released beta versions of its app creation studio this past year. Its app making resume is an impressive one, including the Atlantic's iPad app which went, which went on to win two Appy yeah, <laughs> <Appy awards. laughs> And the analog goes to Dwala, hello. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, real quick, Huddle, where are you guys? I think that I, I really appreciate this honor. Again, it's you guys in the room that built our company, and there's people that aren't up here who have contributed just as much as a lot of us on stage. Um, and I know, just like Huddle, like just, I'm a big fan, man. Um, thank you guys, and thank you everybody for your support. This means a lot, and Silicon Prairie News just if you weren't here, we probably wouldn't be. We would have been one of the companies that would have left trying to stay alive. So Silicon Prairie News, thank you so much. And, and for clarification, uh, we had the wrong description on that award. It's not the new kid. They've been around for a while, but it's the top startup that everyone was talking about the one that marked progress towards solidifying its success, having an all-around banner year. Could be said for all of them as each of our final category finalists were a part of other awards. That was my bad, actually, Dusty. I put that in the script. <laughs> <laughs> well, that does it, folks. That concludes the first Silicon Prairie Awards. I think we should give ourselves another round of applause. I mean, really, really, the year's just begun. These awards recognize things that took place through the end of July, or through, excuse me, through the end of June. I mean, here we are in August, already two months into this, so we've already seen milestones that'll be taking into effect when we get back together. Next year, when we hold the awards, we're going to have it in Des Moines. This is going to be a rotating event. So it goes Omaha, Des Moines, and down in 2014, we'll see you in Kansas City. And in October, Another event happening in Des Moines, actually, Think Iowa. So if uh, you're looking for, you know, it's, it's similar to what we've done last year, and we did Think Iowa last year. We've done Big Omaha now for four years, happening in Des Moines. Check it out at thinkiowa.com. And now I want you guys all to join me in the back there for our closing party, presented by one of our sponsors, Huddle. And that's it, folks. That wraps up the first Silicon Prairie Awards. <laughs>